in this example, we want to capture the user principal name. So we literally copy and paste that. That puts us right before there. Uh, there is a white space, a blank space in there. And let's see that that can, can or cannot be there. It, you need to have a lot of sample logs to determine whether that's the case. But in this case, we, we can. it's not going to hurt if we put it. We make that optional. That moves it right before what we want to capture. And then we can go ahead and open a capture group because we want to grab that user. And we can use the the word element uh, because it can be a blank space or not. Let's put uh, an asterisk. And that's going to capture what we want. So if we were to have this field empty, it will capture group will be an empty uh, string. But again, if we want to capture anything more than just uh, alphanumeric and on the score, which is what the W give us, so we can go back to the wildcard, the dot, which is everything but a, an actual dot and a new line character. And we can say, well, capture everything, uh, zero or more of those, and we can actually stop here on backslash s, but notice what happened. So, well, why is it doing that matching? This is what is called a greedy match, because it's matching not only in sample user, but also in here and in here, and it's grabbing all those. And the solution for that is to use the question mark in here, and that would make it a non-greedy catch, meaning, remember, the question mark is zero or at most one. So as soon as it makes the first match and encounters this backslash S in here, then uh, it's going to stop. But you need to have that termination here at the backslash N. In fact, if we remove that, uh, this is not gonna this is not gonna work. That is what is called a non-greedy search, and this is what you, most of the time you may want to use. Multiple options on how to solve the problem. It's important for you to have enough sample logs that are different so you can test your condition to make sure that your parser or your extraction of the property or your AQL or KQL query, whatever it is that you are doing with this, works uh, reliably for you. And if you have the luxury to do so, we, you can check on the number of steps for the efficiency of it. Obviously, because this one is a little bit more uh, restrictive restrictive, you would say, because of the non-greedy, this has 79 steps. I believe that the other one has around 59 steps. So again, minor differences with, with a, an appliance or a machine of the capabilities of a curator box. But nevertheless, that, that's another variable you may want to see. I would say that the first emphasis should be on robustness. Let's make sure that you really grab each and every instance of those type of logs. I would put that ahead of uh, the efficiency on the numbers of s steps.